What's up, you guys? So in case you missed it, sadly, on the very first day of the new year, Memphis-based rapper Gangsta Boo was found lifeless at a home around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And in this video, we're going to get into the timeline of exactly what happened to Gangsta Boo on New Year's that caused her demise for those of you who care about her as a human being. Gangsta Boo was born Lola Chantrell Mitchell on August 7th, 1979 in Memphis, Tennessee. So she was just 43 years old at the time of her passing. She started off her artistry in her early teens as a poet, according to reports, and she used to perform her poetry for her family. She was known as the Queen of Memphis and was considered a pioneer of 90s female rap. She put out six albums with 3-6 Mafia, three solo albums, and too many mixtapes to count. Her rap career spanned almost 30 years. And she was actually reinvigorating her rap career after years out of the national spotlight. In 2020, she was featured on Run the Jewels' fourth album with Killer Mike. And in 2022, she was featured on Lotto's song, FTCU. F the club up alongside Glorilla, who is also from Memphis. And we also gangsta boo on the verses with her group 36 Mafia, where she was part of one of the most unforgettable moments of verses when her and Busy Bone got into it. And a whole brawl broke out between 36 Mafia and Busy Bone, who appeared to run and hide after throwing a bottle in Gangsta Boo's direction. Gangsta Boo also appeared on reality TV with her boyfriend Emmett on the show Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition. The show only films for about two weeks, according to reports, and it's said to pay very well for those two short weeks. But certain substances, especially white powdery substances, are not allowed in the home where they film during those two weeks. And Gangsta Boo was accused of bringing that stuff into the home by the hosts and producers of the show. Her and her boyfriend were actually kicked off the show after a bag of white powdery stuff was found in her room. Gangsta Boo denied the allegations on the show and on social media. When the episode aired, she posted on social media, you would think that someone like Dr. Ish would have a better choice of delivery when he is trying to be all professional. Not sure if he's just a TV doctor when the cameras are on or in real life when they are cut off. This is hashtag Mental Health Awareness Month. Now this is May, this is May, Mental Health Awareness Month. So if you care so much about people's health with so much concern and sincerity, why did you noticeably allow people to be on prescription meds while drinking alcohol in front of you? Everything was on camera. Don't pretend you didn't know. I wouldn't recommend anyone to you. Even if they were desperate for therapy, you actually owe the people who suffer from these things in the dark a deep apology. It was a bit insensitive and wrong, Doc. Someone may see you say what you're saying and be scared to get help in fear of being looked at as a substance abuser or judged by people. I actually have a real therapist who would never attach personality disorders to substance abuse so freely or allow patients to indulge in alcohol on prescription meds in front of them. Do you not know how dangerous and unsafe that is? Could be fatal for some. Did you not care about that? Don't pick and choose when you're going to be on patrol to be this health concerned doctor. Should be a 24 hour thing. I used to respect you. I have zero respect for you now or your kind. Are you even married? Let's be clear. Do better, homeboy. So basically, she was saying that he allowed other people to abuse prescription drugs and alcohol, like that dangerous combination he allowed, but other things he didn't allow. However, despite her denial, according to reports, Gangsta Boo and her brother may have both been using substances. According to local Memphis reports, Memphis rapper Gangsta Boo, born Lola Mitchell, was found passed away on the porch of a White Haven home near Rains Road between Grace Methodist Church and the White Haven Public Library on Sunday, January 1st, around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So sources connected to Gangsta Boo told TMZ that her passing appears to be substance related. They were told Gangsta Boo was with her brother last night at a local concert in Memphis and that her brother started to overdose sometime in the night 
And he was hospitalized that night, the night of New Year's Eve. He was hospitalized. And I did find one of Gangsta Boo's brothers on social media. I'm not going to get into his information or anything because I don't think he's a public figure. But I seen his post from over 10, 12 years ago where he talks about being Gangsta Boo's brother. And in his likes on Twitter, you can see him liking posts that are giving tribute to his sister. And he posted a picture of the two of them on IG with crying emojis in the caption yesterday. And over the years, he's posted pictures with his sister as well as an older brother. And I just pray for Gangsta Boo's family, all of her siblings, all of her family, her friends. I pray for them that they can eventually find peace with what happened to her because it's obvious she was loved by them. She was loved by them and she was loved by the world. And she definitely left her mark on the world. According to TMZ, her brother ended up being okay after being hospitalized, but Gangsta Boo did not have the same outcome. There are no reports of her being hospitalized. And her body was found on the porch of a home, which could indicate that she may have been leaving the home trying to get help. Sources tell TMZ that people familiar with Gangsta Boo's scene, the scene where she passed away on that porch, they insist that N-A-R-C-O-T-I-C-S were found on her person. They were found on her body and that an f lace substance is believed to be at play. And the police are launching an official investigation. In an interview in 2012, Lola Mitchell, a.k.a. Gangsta Boo, told people exactly how she wants to be remembered. She said, I just want to be known as someone that put her heart into her music and who really, really appreciated her fans. Because if it wasn't for my fans, like I said, I definitely would not still be doing this. My fans are my motivation. I love my fans. I just want people to know that I'm a really hard worker. I'm human just like everyone else. I write all my own music. I've helped other people come up with concepts. I've helped put a lot of people on. And I just want to be respected. When it's all said and done, I want to be remembered as Gangsta Boo from 3-6 Mafia. The first lady of 3-6 Mafia. The first lady of crunk music. The first lady who brought a platinum plaque back to Memphis. The first lady who brought a gold plaque back to Memphis. So if you want to know how to remember Gangsta Boo, I would say it's not for her ending, for how her life ended. I would say it's for her artistry. That's what she said she wanted to be remembered by. Leave a comment and share your favorite memory or even your favorite lyric from Gangsta Boo. May she rest in peace.